Luke 18, 2 through 8, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Jesus ended his parable with the following question. If an ungodly, wicked, and disrespectful judge eventually answers a pestering widow's pleas for help, which he felt were terribly annoying, shall therefore not God answer his own children who cry to him day and night? The obvious answer to this question is, of course God will. George Mueller was a German-English pastor. He was known throughout the world for his faith and persistent prayer. His whole purpose in life was to educate believers on what he already knew. God loves to answer prayer. He did this by never asking for any money or financial support from anyone, but waited for God to burden a person's heart that they would voluntarily donate when the time was right. In total, George and his church cared for 10,024 orphans during his lifetime, providing educational opportunities for the orphans so that they would leave poverty and become productive Christians in their society. He established 117 schools which offered Christian education to more than 120,000 students, He did this all by the power of prayer and a desire to show Christians the power of it. Whenever he prayed for specific needs for his orphanage, God sent exactly what was required. Yet, George Mueller for more than 40 years also prayed for a friend and his friend's son to have their sins forgiven by putting their faith in Jesus Christ. For 40 years, George's burden for his friends remained unanswered. When Mueller died, these men were still unconverted. However, God did answer those prayers in his own time. His friend was converted while attending Mueller's funeral, and his son a week later. Your prayers will outlive you. I honestly believe that God continues to answer the prayers of his people even after they have gone home to be with him. In the book of 1 Samuel in the Old Testament, we find a story of a wonderful woman called Hannah. She prayed repeatedly for her son, and finally when Samuel was born, she then prayed that he would serve God all his life. 1 Samuel 1, 26-28 And she said, O oh my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. God answered her prayer, and Samuel became one of the greatest men of the Old Testament, and even was directed by the Holy Spirit as one of the authors of the Bible. Even when Hannah was gone, God continued to answer the prayers of a mother. Prayers that were made when Samuel himself was still a baby. Samuel eventually died as an old man, but God kept answering her prayer. The wonderful thing we need to know about God and our prayers is that prayer is a spiritual thing. Prayer is not a natural thing. And within the spirit realm there is eternity. Our prayers are not bound by time, and God is not bound by time. We as human beings in our human bodies are bound by time, but not God. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know? That after you and I are gone, God will still be at work, and many of the things we prayed for will come into fruition. I believe that some of us here today are being blessed and protected by the prayers of parents and grandparents. This should motivate you to pray like never before. Are you praying for children to be protected all the days of their life? Are you praying for goodness and mercy to follow them all the days of their life? 
continue to pray for your loved ones. Sometimes when we pray and see nothing happen, it is easy for us to jump to the conclusion that God is not listening to our prayers or hasn't heard our prayers. But God doesn't work on our schedule. He is never too late or too early. He is on time, every time. Don't ever give up on your prayer. Pray and don't give up. Keep on praying. Trust your Heavenly Father to answer according to His wisdom and timing. God honors persistent prayer. There is something about a persistent person that attracts God's attention. Too often as believers we pray once and if we don't see the result we give up. But that is incorrect. Pray on, pray on, pray on. Prayer is not sending God to run on your errands. Prayer is a form of worship. Prayer is the light in the darkness. Prayer allows you to overcome temptation. Prayer is our communication with the Lord. Prayer is our hope when all is lost. Prayer is the confidence in approaching God. But if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Nothing you ask of Him is too much for Him. He is a God of the impossible. He can make the sky rain with manna when you can't find food. He can cure any incurable disease and leave the doctors speechless. When you are thirsty, He can spout water from any dry rock in any desert. When you are running out of time and you need to get something done, He can make the sun stand still. When you need to escape the enemy and you find yourself with nowhere to go, He can part the seas so that you may cross. He is able to send fire from heaven and move unmovable mountains. Ask Him to help you escape the lion's den and He will do it. Ask Him to defeat the giant in your life. Ask Him to feed 5,000. Ask Him to make a blind man see. He can do it. He has done it. If it is in God's will, if He wants to make it happen, He will do it for you. Nothing is impossible for God. He is a God of the impossible. And if you serve this God, the God of the impossible, then nothing is impossible for you. God is always on time. He is always on time. You may think He is late, but He is not. God does not work according to our time. He's going to send the miracle that you're asking for. His time and our time are completely different. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. What does that mean? It means we cannot possibly understand God's timing. It does not work the same way as our time. Think about it. It says that with the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. God was there before the beginning of time. He knows what is best for us and when the right time is. So how can we give God deadlines? He is going to answer the prayer that you're praying. He is always on time and never, ever late. When it feels like nothing is happening, that is when you need to exercise your faith. Believe God will do it for you, but He will do it on His own time, which is the right time. If you can believe, all things are possible to those that believe. Say, the Lord is my help, my fortress, my Redeemer, and God is on His way. If you are going to pray, if you are going to pray, pray without ceasing. Pray until all worldly pleasures become fleeting. Pray in season and when the season has ended. Pray until your trials stop because they have become offended. If you are going to pray, go further and engage in prayer and fasting. Deny your appetites now and hold on to the everlasting. 
Be willing to pray even if your knees get tired. If you are going to pray, pray thy kingdom come. Pray for all and not just for some. Pray believing that you can command the disobedient mountain. Pray knowing that God's bounty is an eternal fountain. Pray. Pray and don't quit when it gets hard. Pray. Pray and keep going even when it gets cold. Pray. Pray and keep fighting because your life depends on it. Pray. Pray and keep believing that God is your omnipotent provider no matter the cost. Keep on praying. You can't avoid the battle of life, but you can pray. If you are going to pray, pray when others stop and have fallen asleep. Pray so you can escape the darkness deep in your soul. Pray and beseech God to make you whole. Pray knowing that your weeping will end when the morning comes. If you are going to pray, pray, hope and do not believe your fears. Pray, trust in God and not your own ways. Pray bolding and do not shrink back from the task. Pray, believe that God already knew what you would ask. If you are going to pray, pray knowing you have already received. Pray to God expecting a blessing because you believed. Pray and bind the forces of darkness and the pit of hell. Pray knowing that all will be well. God is waiting to delight in your prayers. If you are going to pray, pray fervently. Make sure you subscribe to the new Line of Judah Prayer channel. Click the link in the description. How to Become a Prayer Warrior Philippians 4, 6, KJV Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Christians will read the story of Daniel, how he prayed, and something happened. They will also read about Elijah, how he prayed, that there should be no rain, and how he prayed for the rain to come. Christians will also read about how Elisha woke the dead boy and how he performed miracles through prayer. Christians have read about many great men of God and how they were able to perform miracles through prayer. They have heard the testimonies of people who prayed and they were delivered of evil oppressing them, but they were not willing to pay the price to become a prayer warrior. It is not possible to become a warrior without going through the process of a warrior. No one will ever become a pilot without going through a series of training and examination. You cannot become a professional footballer if you don't train and build yourself. If you are born with the talent of playing football, you will still have to develop yourself. Who are these prayer warriors? Prayer warriors are mountain movers. Prayer warriors are not those who look at a mountain standing right in front of them and panic. They speak to the mountain. They command mountains to move. Their type of words can be found in Zechariah 4, 7. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. You can never see a prayer warrior without faith. Their faith is a weapon that they use against every mountain standing against them. Do you want to be a mountain mover? Do you want to speak to the mountain and tell it to move away? Do you want to turn mountains to plains? You must be a prayer warrior. Prayer warriors are powerful beings. They pray to make things happen. 
They don't just stop praying until something happens. These people are very powerful, and they don't rely on their own ability and their own strength. They are people who trust in God for result. They cherish Jesus and will never try to do things out of their own power. Do you want to be a powerful prayer warrior? Do you want to stop being a powerless Christian? Do you want to stop being a nominal or superficial Christian? Then take your prayer life seriously. Prayer is not a joke. How do you become a prayer warrior? Put on the whole armor of God. The first thing you should do if you want to be a prayer warrior is to know how to carry the whole armor of God. If you do not have the armor of God, you're not a warrior. You cannot go into a fight without armor. Ephesians 6, 3 Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having all done, to stand. Many Christians want to become a prayer warrior, but they don't want to take the armor of God. What is this armor that we need to put on? So what are the components of the armor of God? First of all, Paul says, if you are going to defeat the devil, you've got to use the armor by putting on the girdle of truth. Now, the Roman soldier wore a tunic, and in order to keep this tunic from getting in his way, he wore a girdle, and he would have this girdle around his waist to tie everything together. Now in the Christian life, our girdle is of truth, and the girdle of truth represents the truth of the word of God controlling our lives. When we wake up in the morning, the first thing we should reach for is the word of God and let the word of God get into our lives. Truth is what gives our armor security and strength. Remember that the God of this world is the father of lies. And as you are living on this earth, as a child of God, it is imperative you put on the girdle of truth each and every day. If I, as a child of God, am questioning God's word, if I am not believing God's word, if I haven't taken all of God's word and applied it, then Satan is going to get the victory. The girdle of truth simply means the application of God's word to my life. Satan is the liar. And if my loins aren't girded with truth, I am going to believe his lie. It is important that we immerse ourselves in scripture and we apply the truth in our lives. Now, having put on the girdle of truth, which is the word of God, the next step is to put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is for the front and for the back. This piece of the armor protected vital organs in the heat of the battle. The righteousness is not our righteousness. Isaiah 64 verse 6, all of our righteousness are like filthy rags. It has nothing to do with our own righteousness. It is to do with the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which we receive when we are saved. Our righteousness now comes from us believing in the completed works of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us. When Satan comes to you as the accuser, the only way you can fight him is simply by not getting into the fight. You have to stand out of the way and let the righteousness of Christ deal with him. All you have to do is put on the, the breastplate of righteousness and remind yourself and the accuser, I am not wearing my own righteousness. I am wearing the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And then continue on praying. Continue on serving the Lord. Satan won't be able to respond to this because he cannot fault the perfect sinless life of Jesus. I believe that one of the greatest tactics to stop believers to pray is when he comes to us as the accuser. Put the breastplate of righteousness on. You see, when he comes to me as the deceiver, he meets the girdle of truth, which is the word of God. When he comes to me as the accuser, he meets the breastplate of righteousness. 
the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which leads of course to our third piece of the armor, the shoes of peace. This we better take very very seriously. Take it very very seriously because Satan is the destroyer. He is the destroyer and he will do everything in his power. He will use every single resource he has. He will throw every single demon he can in order to destroy you. He's after the destruction of your life, the destruction of your marriage, the destruction of everything you hold close and dear to you. You saw what he did in the story of Job. Believe me, he wants to do the same to you. Satan is the destroyer. Now, the Christian soldier puts on the preparation of the gospel of peace. A Roman soldier's feet were fitted with the sandals called caligae. These sandals were made to help protect the soldiers feet during long marches into battle. They had extremely thick soles and wrapped around perfectly around the ankles of the soldier in a way that protected them against blisters. Caligae also had spikes at the bottom to help the soldier stand firm wherever he was. He could stand. He wouldn't be slipping and be afraid of hurting his feet. He could stand. Believers also have a firm foundation in the gospel. As a believer, we have peace in knowing we are secure in what Jesus Christ has done for us. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. After we've done that, we take up the shield of faith. So how can I put the shield of faith on? That is very simple. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The devil loves to throw those fiery darts. But you have the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Then we have the helmet of salvation. Then having done all this, we take up the sword. After putting on the whole armor of God, you need to be holy. You cannot be a prayer warrior who lives in sin. To be a powerful warrior, there are some practices that you must drop and others that you must pick up. And sin is one you must drop. You cannot be living in sin and think you can have the power of God in you. The psalmist says in Psalm 24, 3 through 4, that, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. If you are not holy, you cannot ascend to the place of power. The secret of prayer warriors is that they don't go about sinning. Sin gives the devil a way into one's life. They block sin in their life. They leave no room for the devil. They allow purity in their lives instead. Don't just wish to be a warrior, then ask yourself, are you ready to live a holy life? Are you ready to make holiness part of your life? If sinners entice you, can you run to 1 Thessalonians 5.22 KJV? Abstain from all appearance of evil. Do you want to be a prayer warrior? Prove it with a holy life. Pray with power. If you want to become a prayer warrior, you must know how to pray with power. You must know how to stay longer in the place of prayer. To become a prayer warrior, you must pray without ceasing. Prayer warriors pray when they feel like it and when they don't. They pray in good times and in bad times. Pray at all times and stand against the schemes of the devil. Take your hand in Christ and pray constantly. If you see any prayer warrior, they are always at alert. They don't sleep in spirit. They keep their eyes open and they know how to spot the enemies from afar. This is what you must do to become a prayer warrior. A warrior will always be a warrior if they continue to do the things of a warrior. If you don't take off the armor of God, you will continue to be a warrior. If you run from sin and its appearances, you will remain a warrior. If you pray always with passion and fire in you, you will always be a prayer warrior.